Other Honorable Speaker, the committee was guided by the constitutional and statutory requirements, such as the nat our national values and principles of governance, the conduct of state officers, specific qualifications for appointment as cabinet secretaries, leadership and integrity prerequisites. And Honorable Speaker, it is in this light, Honorable Speaker, that we have recommended having looked at the suitability of the nominees as was assessed after scrutiny of their background, their academic credentials, as I said, their professional qualifications, their work and professional experience, their personal integrity, as well as their performance during the approval hearings, the committee observed and recommended that all the 19 nominees listed on our speaker without having to repeat the names in the interest of time so that I allow members time, adequate time to consider all these nominees and uh, have time to debate. That Honorable Speaker, all the 21, sorry, including the Attorney General, the former Attorney General, Justin Bidan Muturi, Stella Soy, Weekly Fambeta Oparanya, Alfred Nganga Mutua, that out of the 21 nominees, Honorable Speaker, that were submitted to the House, and I said I don't want to read all the names because they are already there on the motion, that we consider for approval the 20 and reject the approval of only one nominee, Ms. Stella Soy Langat. Honorable Speaker, in vetting and in considering the approval of this nominees, Honorable Speaker, the 20 nominees are recommended for approval to take office if approved by this House, Honorable Speaker, because all that the Appointments Committee has done is to consider and vet them for approval of the 20 nominees and to reject the nomination of Stella Soy Langat, who had been nominated for appointment to the Ministry of Gender, Culture, and Arts and Heritage. This lady, Honorable Speaker, is a career civil servant who has extensive experience in public service. However, Honorable Speaker, she did not demonstrate adequate understanding of the docket to which she had been nominated, and the committee found her unsuitable for appointment to that docket. And Honorable Speaker, I want to draw reference to members on the report on page 238, Honorable Speaker, and you will see from the observations of the committee on observation number eight on page 238, the committee did note that the nominee's experience in the public service is marked by very frequent job transitions in various roles. All the six different posts. Give the majority leader five minutes. I was winding up on a speaker. I was saying that the nominee's experience in the public service was marked by very frequent job transitions in various roles. All the six different postings that the nominee has held do not require any long-term strategic planning. As a result, she has not become grounded in any specific leadership role in the public service. And therefore, it was the feeling of the committee that if you had a nominee like this serving in a high office like that of cabinet secretary, she may not sit well to serve the public in a manner envisaged by our statutes and the expectations of the public. Two Honorable Speaker, that the nominee under nine failed to demonstrate adequate knowledge of topical administrative and technical issues touching on the Ministry of Gender, Culture and Arts and Heritage to which she had been nominated. Honorable Speaker, those who are watching, we remember a few of the unfortunate uh, mentions of uh, our Honorable Ladies without husbands and this being a gender ministry, Honorable Speaker, it was a feeling of many people across the country that uh, she may not sit well to address gender issues in that ministry. Two Honorable Speaker, that the nominee is unsuitable for the position to which she was nominated, as she was unable to respond to satisfa in a satisfactory manner to the queries raised during the approval hearing relating to gender, heritage, and culture. Honorable Speaker, I will also want to close, Honorable Speaker, by asking members that being nominated to this high office of a cabinet secretary is indeed a great honor. 
An Honourable Speaker, once members of the public or even members of Parliament like the Honourable Andai, Honourable Mbadi, and even the former governors who have been nominated to serve in this high office of cabinet secretary have been nominated, it is our solemn duty as members of the National Assembly to vet all these nominees, check their suitability to hold office. There may be a feeling, Honourable Speaker, that this or that nominee may not sit well in a certain docket. But again, in line with Article 152.2 of the Constitution, the prerogative to reassign dockets is vested on the President. And Honourable Speaker, I know there are feelings that probably this particular person, his qualifications, his experience would sit better in another ministry than the ministry they have been nominated to. And it was our feeling, Honourable Speaker, in the Committee of Appointments that we do leave that to the President in his own prerogative to realign and reassign dockets as time may demand and also as he may find fit in terms of where he wants to sit his nominees and his cabinet secretaries in an endeavor to deliver to the people of Kenya. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, in conclusion, on behalf of the committee, allow me to thank all the nominees for offering themselves to serve the country. And in the words of Martin Luther King Jr., who once said, the life's most urgent question is what you are doing for others. As leaders, Honorable Speaker, we should always be guided by what is best for the people of Kenya. The House is mandated to either approve or reject nomination for appointment based on suitability, and the outcome can be either an approval or rejection. An approval simply signifies a committee established that a person is suitable for the office to which he has been nominated. In the same lens, Honorable Speaker, a rejection. Honorable Speaker, order members, order. Kiborek. Honorable Speaker, I was saying, in the same lens, a rejection only connotes a person's unsuitability to the office to which he or she is being nominated and is in no way an indictment of the capability or competence of a nominee to perform other responsibilities. I say this, Honorable Speaker, with all due respect to the nominee, Ms. Stella Soy, that her rejection is not an indictment in any way of her capability or competence to perform other responsibilities. It is only her suitability to hold the position of Cabinet Secretary for Gender. And therefore, the, His Excellency the President has a prerogative to nominate her into any other position other than that position that she had been nominated for. And the President is also has a prerogative to nominate another person from the same region, the same area, the same village,